Last night, the Homeland Security Committee approved two articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas in a party-line vote of 18 to 15. Now, just to underscore how unusual all of this is, it has been more than a century since a member of the president's cabinet has been impeached. The last time was in 1876, when Secretary of War William Belknap was charged with criminally disregarding his duty and basely prostituting his high office to his lust for private gain. In other words, taking bribes. This time around, Republicans are moving to impeach Secretary Mayorkas for failing to uphold the law and breaching the public trust, which sounds very official, but is not actually a crime or misdemeanor. In fact, by all accounts, Secretary Mayorkas has been basically doing his job, a job that allows him to determine how and when to detain migrants, to decide which migrants to prioritize, and to use his authority to allow migrants to temporarily live and work in the United States for humanitarian reasons. Someone should tell Steve Scalise. Secretary Mayorkas' job is to protect America's homeland. He's the Homeland Security Secretary. When he comes before Congress, he testifies under oath that America's border is secure. That's a flat-out lie. The Secretary of Homeland Security is the person in charge of the border. He can secure the border today. He's chosen not to. The articles of impeachment against Secretary Mayorkas are now headed to the House floor for a vote as early as next week. Joining me now is Brendan Buck, MSNBC political analyst and former press secretary to former House Speaker John Boehner. Brendan, is um, the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas the big winner for Republicans in 2024? <laughs> well, they certainly think it is. And you know what? It may be. At least the issue of immigration has, has proven to be a winner for Republicans. And I think that's why they have their foot to the gas here. Polls have consistently shown that voters blame Joe Biden more than they blame Republicans on this issue. And anything that they can do to put it in the spotlight, they probably think is good. But I, I think we're probably giving them too much credit to think there actually is a national political angle here. A lot of this is just pure base Republican politics. It's even just House conference politics, where there's been so much um, energy spent convincing people at home that the, the administration is willfully allowing uh, immigrants into the country for whatever agenda. You, you tell people that, that this problem has been going on for so long, they're eventually going to expect you to do something about it. Um, and, and this is perhaps the easiest thing that they can grasp and do. Um, it certainly cheapens what impeachment is all about. Um, but on a lot of times, you got to remember, a lot of House Republicans are, are really in their own universe. They're in their own heads. They think that they are solving these really important problems, whether or not the average voter looks at them and takes them seriously at all. Well, I mean, I think it's fair to mention here, they may think they have a winner by impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas. But the reality is, the thing that would potentially go much further towards solving the border crisis is the bipartisan immigration deal that's being scuttled by the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump. I mean, do you think that Republicans don't pay a price for that as it concerns national interest in immigration? Yeah, they're obviously giving the, the president a, a huge opportunity. I mean, look, this is what is so frustrating about this. We have an incredibly, incredibly rare opportunity right now to actually do something about the border. And for if you're a Republican, who's always rejected any of these compromises because Democrats have always insisted on things having to do with legalization, this is an opportunity where that's not even on the table. You really just get a stronger border policy. And this is the argument that Mitch McConnell has been making to, to senators. And yet we're walking away from that. But it is very emblematic of what the House has become. We are putting this type of uh, theater in place of, of solving actual problems. And the, where I think what I'm concerned is that no one does p pay a political price anymore for not putting policy first. You are rewarded for theater. And that's what so much of the House has become. Look, in 2016, there was a somewhat similar effort to impeach the IRS commissioner. I don't know if you remember this, John oh, Kostinen. The Freedom Caucus, the Freedom Caucus was trying to impeach him um, because they were upset, you know, largely with the IRS and, and some of the past actions. He wasn't even the commissioner at the time of some of the things that people were upset with. But we made the argument to members that this was not serious. That, there are, that impeachment should mean something. And when this was brought up for a vote, over 100 members of the Republican conference voted with leadership to defeat it. We were a much more serious place just eight years ago when that took place. Um, it's a very different house now, and theater is rewarded. I, I, I don't know whether I'm getting too deep down the sort of conspiracy rabbit hole, but the fact that Mitch McConnell was so clear 
that they were going to punt on this in service to Trump really felt like a really kind of almost a backhanded disclosure. Do, do you think that was Mitch McConnell kind of, if you will, getting the last laugh? Well, McConnell obviously knows the politics better than anybody. Mitch McConnell is trying to find some way to send money to Ukraine. I mean, that's what this is all about for him. And I think he now realizes that he's he's exhausted everything that they, that they can do here. I mean, it's not surprising. You know, we've talked about this before. Immigration is the single hardest thing for us to be able to do. You leave Donald Trump aside, this was going to be very hard to do just because of the incentives of, of Republicans to, 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 to cater to that base again. Um, look, Donald Trump walking into into this dicey of an issue basically guaranteed it wasn't going to happen. It, it, it's surprising that it took that long for McConnell to actually say that out loud. I'll say the only good thing to come of this is my um, my understanding of the history of uh, cabinet impeachments. And then it goes back to um, <laughs> William Belknap in 1876, back when impeachment was a serious thing pursued by House Republicans. Brendan Buck, my friend, thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, good to see you.